Learn by your mistakes, they say. That's what I did with this miniature. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're having a good day. I'm back with another god from Ankh, Gods of Egypt. This is Ptah. She is primed with black primer and then Zenitel highlighter with gray sear from Citadel primer paints because we're going to be doing a mix of contrast, regular acrylic paints, and a whole bunch of messy stuff that I try to fix along the way. Keep watching to find out what I do wrong so that you can avoid doing the same thing. We're starting off with some lava orange on his bottom part of the robe, uh, which as you can see is very, very, very opaque, very clear. You're going to need many layers of this, so off camera as it dries, I fix it up to get it to the orange I wanted. Now with the zenithal highlighting, it does kind of work, so it creates like a dark and light effect, but I, I still don't understand why people use zenithal highlighting with acrylic paints. I don't, maybe it's just me, I'm wrong, but anyways. So we're going to use a little uh, Naz, Nazdreg yellow right now on the tarp part of his robe. Now I should have just stuck with this yellow. I shouldn't have tried to fix it later and try and copy the artwork because I make a mess out of this. But you're going to see as I go along. But I mean, look at how the Zenithal highlighting shading works great with this contrast. Now I did a good job with that. I was very proud of it. Like I said, I shouldn't have touched it. I mean, you learn and the, the, the joys of a hobby is you learn and you make it better next time, right? Right. Here comes my first blender. Using Griffhound Orange on top of that Nasdrag Yellow. Because I'm trying to blend it into the yellow because it had certain parts that were more orange than others. As you can see, I also fixed the Lava Orange a bit more on the bottom. I put another couple layers on it while it dried. And so, okay, not so bad right now. I'm blending it in nicely. It could work, right? It looks not so bad fine but should i have done this i don't know yet you'll see later on skeleton horde now we're using this on his wraps because he doesn't have much it's mostly just some on his arms and uh, the, those parts dangling from like his wraps like dangling from like the side of his body uh onto this to the onk part and yeah again i use this great idea with uh, zenithal highlighting but what i do later on just completely messes it up Hey, I hope you're enjoying these Ankh videos, guys. I'm glad to be back with them. Uh, anyways, I wanted you guys to uh, let me know down in the comments below uh, what you think of my god so far. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Lava Orange, we're back again. Now we're doing a dry brush. Trying to still blend in that top part. <laughs> and just, I don't know. Anyways, right, a little bit of dark oat flesh now. We're using this on his horns because he had a lighter brown color than his skin. So I just wanted to use this plus with the Zenithal highlight. Uh, it's pretty cool and I've come to, to the fact that I gotta learn to use contrast paints on everything even if I make a mess out of it, I can clean up after a little bit of blood angels red a little bit of magos purple because there's some parts on the top but again I'm gonna come back and mess this all up later and fix it all up with some metallic paints a little bit of pterodon turquoise now because there's some parts of his armor that had this like blue and on the top part of that uh, I don't know I think is it supposed to be a sun or something that represents the sun on top there anyways and I'm also doing spots where I'm gonna be doing some metallic blue later on just so I can have like a base blue and then just dab some metallic blue into it to give it more of a background and a 3d effect of shining all right, now we're going to be doing his actual skin with some werewolf fur. This is a grayish brown color, which is perfect for his skin. It was a, like a light brown, darkish color. So this is going to be perfect. So he's got some on his hands. You got to be careful. He's got a little bit of skin protruding also underneath those wraps. So as you're painting him, I mean, I should have maybe done the skin first so that if I hit the wraps, it's not a big deal. But also this way, if I hit the skin with the skeleton horde, I could just paint over that as well. Alright, now we're going to use some mummy robes. This is like a beige white color. This is going to be for pretty much all the rest of the straps that he has on him. Uh, in the artwork, he had like some different kind of colors on the straps. I want to go with this so that I can blend it all in with the shade later on. And it comes out looking pretty well. So you'll notice that there's some straps down below of his robes here. Uh, some of his chest and also around his neck and hanging on to that like top cape robe thing. So just keep your eye out for that. And, uh, do your best with it. I mean, you know, if you're a master painter, you wouldn't be watching my videos, but if you're a beginner like I am, uh, you'll make mistakes and you're gonna learn from them. You're gonna paint them just so you can get them nicely done onto the table instead of looking like the bare plastic that they were before, right? All 
All right, next we're gonna use this metallic paint from Iron Painter called Tainted Gold. It's got a green hue to it, really nice. This is perfect for those arm braces that he has right there, or I guess tricep, bicep, tricep? Whatever those things are, you know, that part of the muscle up there. <laughs> All right, now we're using Greedy Gold, and of course these miniatures wouldn't be Ankh miniatures without lots of gold on them. So pretty much anything that has been left unpainted is pretty much gonna be done with this gold. And again, it said it's greedy gold, so it's a little bit brighter, but not as dark as like Liberator gold uh, from uh, the Citadel. So this is the one I want to use with this. And if you hit some parts that you're gonna paint over later on with some other metallic paints, it's not a big deal. I end up painting over parts that I'd already figured I was gonna leave like this, but then changed my mind halfway through. So, you know, just take your time and take a look and see what you wanna paint as gold. I mean, you, what's funny is you can use your imagination on all of this. All right, you know when they tell you don't put shade everywhere? This is where I make my huge mistake. Agrax Earth Shade. I, I hit some parts by accident. I said, oh, I'll just go over the entire miniature now with it. Well, all the shades and all this, or not the shades, but all the contrast paints I did just got darkened like crazy. It makes the top part of the robe look not even orange anymore. Uh, the, the skeleton horde gets almost as dark as the skin now. I just make a real mess. Yeah, I'm gonna clean that all up. Royal Purple is next. It's a metallic paint. We're gonna use this on some of the jewels. And all along that backside, I do every second one with this nice metallic purple color. It's amazing. Uh, just use this and, you know, you can use red, you could use uh, green if you want to, you could do blue, uh, you could do any colors you want. You could even use a contrast paint over it maybe, or like some ink or something just to get it the way you want it. A little Azure Magic now. This is another metallic uh, color. It's like a bluish green. And we're going to use this on those parts, like I said a while ago, that I used that uh, Pterodon Turquoise uh, just to give them a little bit more pop, but not get the entire part of it, just like some raised edges and one part of his scepter as well. Now, I'm sure you're sick of seeing me all these use these metallic colors on every single go, but I mean, they all have these colors on them. So I'm using gemstone again. <laughs> and of course, this is going to be for one last part of the scepter, a couple more of his jewels. Uh, some different areas and as you can see I'm also touching up that top part of that sun thingy on the top. All right, now we're gonna be doing the base and we're gonna be using some rigid brown. This is the color that matched mostly the color that was there before I found. Yeah, so I'm gonna use this for the base because it's, like I said, it was pretty much the closest color to what this miniature originally looked like. And I wanna keep the original colors around the rim at least, but I'm also gonna be putting on a AK Interactive Diorama light and dry crackle effect on this guy. And I've used this on uh, Anubis, but on top of that sandy desert. Now I didn't wanna do it this time. I want to see what it was like having a paint underneath it. And this is again, it looks like a glue. So what's fun is if you wanted to put like some rocks in it already or some sand or some tufts and stuff like that, it will stick to it when it dries. It's almost like a pasty glue that does a cool effect. And I do have to say, I like more the effect this one gives compared to those ones from Citadel. It doesn't crack like crazy, they don't fall off. And look, as you can see, nice, beautiful, just dry cracks. And now I'm using a light tone, just very light, just brushing it over this so it gets into the nooks and crannies. Uh, give it that nice desert look. And there you go, folks. Pata is all painted, ready for the table. He took quite a bit of time to paint, but and I learned a lot of mistakes from him. But anyways, that's what you got to do. I want to thank you guys for watching. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. We'll catch you all in the next one.